What's up there, ASFG Middle School? This is Mr. Mike Hoffman. In this video, I'm gonna show you an in-depth look on how to set up your digital portfolios that you're gonna be using uh, through several of your classes this year in seventh grade and that you will then carry with you through eighth grade and beyond. Now, before we get into the how, let's talk a little bit about the why. The reason why we're spending this time setting up these digital portfolios is because we wanna create a space for you to reflect and to share your work. So we know that reflecting, right, looking back at what you've learned and how you've learned it, what you did well and what you could do better next time is a really important step in the learning process. But we wanna make the reflection visible and give the opportunity to share it right, with other students, with your teachers, as well as with your parents. Uh, the second reason why we wanna set up these digital portfolios is to give you an audience, right, an audience beyond just your teachers or your classmates' eyes, right, a place where your work can go and where other people can access it and learn from it as well. And then finally, we wanna set up your digital portfolios because we wanna help you uh, set up and to build a positive digital footprint. So we know that often in school, we talk about the negative side of digital footprint, things you don't wanna be showing on social media and so forth, but there's a whole nother side to it, right? Digital and social media is a great place for you to show off who you are, what you're learning, what you're thinking, what you care about, and to really build a footprint that others then can then use to learn more about you, right? So it's gonna be a great opportunity to practice and to become better at crafting and designing a positive academic digital footprint. To get started, go to blogger.com and then in the top right hand corner, click sign in. You wanna make sure that when you do this, you choose your ASFG account. Type in your password and then you are ready to get going. From here, you can create a limited blogger profile with your display name, and then this should be your proper name. And then click continue to blogger. From here, you wanna click the button down towards the middle that says create new blog. When you do that, the first thing you're gonna be asked to do is to create a title. Creating titles can be a little bit tricky. Right, for this specific portfolio, you want something that's catchy, but at the same time, professional. So before you choose a title, spend a little time and think about something that's really going to do both of those things. Grab someone's attention and represent yourself as a professional student here at American School. Do note that you can change your title later on. So even if you're not 100% satisfied, you can just put something down to move on to the next step. The address, we do want something very specific, which is your first name, your last name, and then your graduation date. It will then be at .blogspot.com. From there, you can spend a second looking for a theme, but don't worry too much because we're going to come back to that in our next step. Then click Create Blog. Now it's going to ask you whether you want to purchase a specific domain name, and you're going to click No Thanks. Here in these first three account setting things, you can just X them out as they're for language as well as some laws in Europe that we don't have to worry too much about here in Mexico. The next step, if you go down to settings, and on the basic setting, you wanna scroll down where it says blog readers. You want it to be public, meaning anyone who finds the link to your blog can then access it. The next thing you wanna set up in your settings is posts, comments, and sharing. Here, what you wanna do is, under comment moderation, you wanna click always. What that's gonna do is it's going to allow you to always moderate which comments get posted and which ones don't. This is great for preventing any trolls from leaving bad comments on your site. Make sure after you make any of these changes, you click save settings. In this next step, we're gonna get our blogs organized. And we're going to begin with taking a look at and finding a theme that really works well for us. To do that, on the menu on the left side, click Theme. And you'll notice now that Blogger gives you a couple different theme options as well as several different color profiles within that style. Now you do want to think about the type of work that is going on this blog. Right? For the most part, you're going to be posting work, whether that be Google Docs, videos, images, as well as your reflections. So a theme such as this one that is picture heavy might not be a great choice. Also note that once you choose a theme, it's always really easy to go back and find a different one if you don't like it. 
Now, once you find a theme that you think you might like, click on it, and notice that it will have your title as well as your profile. And if this is truly the one that you want, click Apply to Blog. Next thing we want to do is think about layout. To do that, we're going to choose the layout option over on our left side menu. And there's a couple things that we have to do, as well as a couple different options that we can choose to or choose not to use. What's very important that in our sidebar, whether that's on the left or right side of our theme, we want to make sure labels are shown. And the reason why is labels are going to keep our different posts organized by class. Blog archive is something that you can choose to keep or not. To remove it, click the edit icon and simply click remove and confirm. Another one is report abuse. Again, you can choose to keep it or not. The next thing we want to think about is our welcome. To do that, we're going to go over to our posts and we're going to create, click, new post. So you open up the blog post for your welcome and you want to give it a title such as Welcome to my portfolio. Now from there you can follow the directions or as well as use my example to help guide you in writing your welcome. I have mine here already written on a Google document so I'm simply going to copy and paste it in. In addition, I also want to include a picture to help spice it up a little bit. To do that, I'm going to click on the picture icon and I'm going to upload and choose a file. Now I've got a couple different pictures that I can choose from, but I want to make sure the one that I'm choosing, again, represents me, looks nice, as well as it's professional. So no pictures of you hanging out with friends at the beach. Right, that would be one example. This one's a little bit more fun. I think that's the one I'm going to go with. Click open, click, and then add selected. All right, and then from here, I can move it around a little bit to better make sure that it's nice and centered. That right there looks good. Now I'm going to click Publish. Once I click Publish, it'll then bring me back to my posts, and it'll show up right there. Now, because this is my welcome, I want it always at the top of my blog. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Layout, and I'm going to scroll down a little bit until I find Page Body. Now here, the featured post, I want to click on edit, and I want to choose the welcome post that I just created. Select a featured post, and in this case, I'm going to click welcome to my portfolio, and then click save. What this will ensure is that that welcome post will always be the first one showing. That way, when people arrive at my blog, they are able to see who I am and what the blog is about. In this section, I'm going to show you how to create new posts for your blog as a place to share and reflect on the work that you're doing here at school. Now, this step can be a little bit tricky because we're going to be getting into a little bit of the HTML coding. So, I encourage you to pause, rewatch this video as many times as needed until you feel comfortable doing this on your own. The first step is over on the left side menu, you want to click on posts and you want to click new post. Now up top, just as we did for our welcome, we want to give a title to our blog post. And in this case, we want to make it clear what assignment and what class we're posting and reflecting on. For this first example, we are going to be adding in some of the work that we did in language arts class by Mr. One, and specifically with our narrative unit standing up against injustice. So I might start with LA and then a little hyphen narrative standing up against injustice. Now from here, just like any piece of writing, we want to make sure that our blog post is organized. Now this might look different depending on what you're posting and from what class you're sharing work from, but here's the general idea of what you're going to do. The first thing is you want to use your text size to help make it clear to your reader what each section is about. I'm going to start with my subheading and I'm going to click work sample. And I'm actually going to come back to the step in just a little while. After this, I want to include my reflection. Again, I'm going to click on subheading and type reflection. Now, I've already had my reflection written, but you can go back and look at our example that we're sharing with you, as well as the directions written to help guide you when writing your reflection. Simply going to copy it over and paste it. Now, reflecting is going and looking back. However, reflecting is also looking back to help you move forward. 
And again, part of my reflection is what am I going to do in the future to become a more skilled student, or in this case, a more skilled writer? Again, I'm going to copy that and paste it in. Now, let's go back to the work sample. In here, you're going to be able to post different types of work. For example, if you're reflecting on a video project, you can click on the video icon and insert a video from YouTube. You can also insert images. So for example, if you're creating a poster digitally, you can insert the image from your desktop there, or you can also take a picture of your work, upload it to your desktop, and then upload it to your blog there. Now this last part is how to share and embed work from Google. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. So again, pause and rewatch as necessary. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my Google document, or it could be a Google Slides or any type of Google um, document. I'm going to click on File, and go down to Publish to Web. From here, I want to choose Embed, and then click Publish. Now, Google Drive is going to ask if I'm sure, because when you're publishing work, it makes it public on a web, and therefore someone else could find your work. But that's exactly what we're trying to do. So click OK. Right there is the HTML code that's going to tell the blog how to recreate and how to embed your actual Google document into your post. I'm going to click copy and I'm going to go back to my blog and I'm going to click on HTML. Again, this is where a little bit of coding is going to happen. We got lots of stuff. I'm going to go all the way up to the top. Notice I have the, my subheading of work sample. Right? That's where I'm going to paste the code. All right. Now I'm going to click publish. From here, I want to see what it looks like. So I'm going to hover over it and I want to click view. So there we go. There's my post. But you'll notice there's a couple places where I got to make some fixes. Down there, I got some extra spaces that I want to get rid of. And up top, I really want to fix it so that my Google Doc is a little bit easier to see. And again, this is where it gets a little tricky. I'm going to go back to Blogger, click edit. From here in the HTML code to make it bigger, in between iframe and SRC, I want to change the height of the Google Doc. And I'm going to do that simply by typing in height equals, and I might start with something like 600. Click space, and then I'm going to go width equals, and the width, I might have to do a little bit of testing to see what's going to work perfectly. Maybe I'll start off with 700. And then I'm going to click space. It's really important that there's a space there a space there, and a space there, as well as that height and width are spelled right. I'm going to click Update. And now I'm going to go back to the post, refresh the page, and see how it looks. You'll notice it looks much better, right? The height looks pretty good, but the width is still not quite big enough. I've got a little extra room over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in, back to Edit, and where it says Width, I might try 800. See how that looks. Click Update, go back, refresh the page. Now I think it looks great. I've got my Google document right in there with my subheading of work sample. I've got my reflection. Again, I gotta go back in there and change some of that spacing because it doesn't look great. And I can simply go back to Edit. And in this case, I wanna go back into the Compose view. I'm gonna scroll down on my post and get rid of some of this space. There we go, there's an extra space and then click update and then go back and see how my blog post now looks. Looks much better. Now the next part is I need to add a label and the reason why I need to add the label is because this will help all my work stay organized within the class. I'm going to go back and click edit. Over on the right side I'm going to click on labels and because this is for language arts class I'm going to write language arts and I'm going to simply click update. Now if I go back to my blog, I'm going to show you what that actually now looks like. You'll notice now on the left side, I've got a section for labels. And there's language arts. That's going to be really helpful when I go back to my home page. I have my welcome up top. Oof, that's a big picture. We might have to do something about that. And I've got my language arts down there. But as I add more and more posts to my blog, I want to be able to keep it organized by class. So as you add posts from different classes, your labels will appear here and then make it easier for you to find.
In this step, we're going to talk a little bit about how to customize your themes, colors, and fonts to really personalize and make your blog look good. Now, again, you can always choose a different theme from the one you started off with simply by clicking on it and then click choose this theme. But once you have one chosen that you like, you can customize it even farther. Simply click on customize. From here, again, you have your different themes as well as the colors but you can also then click on background and do some further edits. For example, I could remove this image of the flowers and choose a different image. I can also choose a different color scheme. And again, play around with it, find something, and then after you make a change, click apply to blog. Now you can also personalize your blog even further by clicking on advanced. From here, you can choose different fonts, colors, and styles for the different parts of your blog. For example, on the page text, you can choose different types of font. Now, be wary that this is the font that people are going to be reading. So, for example, something like calligraphy might not be a great choice as it would be hard to read. And then you notice as you click on background, you can mess around with colors, blurs, links, titles, posts, right? And just about everything can be updated. Now note that when you make a change, make sure to apply to blog. And then go back to blog to see how it looks. Any change you make, you can always change back again. So again, feel free to play. The last set is your gadgets. Now, here again is where your gadgets laid out, but I think the best place to change gadgets would be going back to Blogger. And where it says layout, here is where you can then again delete certain gadgets as well as add certain ones. Again, feel free to play, personalize your blog, make it feel good to you and represent who you are. In this last section, I'm gonna talk about leaving and approving comments on the blog. Now, one of the most important features of blogs is the ability to create an online community of people who share ideas, which doesn't mean just the author of the blog gets to share, but also the readers. This feedback is a really important part of learning and growing. So to leave a comment, you could simply click on the blog post, and when you're done reading it, scroll down to the bottom and click enter your comment. Now it's important that comments are specific and constructive. We wanna practice being good digital citizens and supporting each other, which doesn't mean we can't be critical, but it always means we need to be respectful. Now, after reading it, you wanna make some specific comments addressing the work. Like for example, I agree with this work sample that representation is also really important for who gets seen on TV. I agree that rep... Other things that go into a good post are questions or things that you might criticize. For example, I might ask a question about representation. This way it sparks a dialogue and really takes advantage of the two-way um, communication that blogs offer. Now when you're done with your comment, you simply click publish. Now going back to my blog, I'm going to go over to comments and I'm going to click on awaiting moderation. So notice again in our settings when we first set up our blog, we clicked that we always wanted to approve comments. Again, this prevents people from leaving things that are not so nice or spam and allowing us to not allow those comments to be shown. So once I read the comment, I'm going to click check and I'm going to click publish. And now the comment has been successfully added to my post. Now it's also a really good idea to respond. So if I go then back to my blog post and click read more, I can now reply to that comment. Thanks for the feedback. And then I might continue on and then click publish. So that's it. That's how to leave as well as approve comments to create a back and forth dialogue with our blogs to extend our learning.